This is Rich Man. But I call it home. In the heart of the San Francisco Bay Area lies a city where stories echo through the streets. Each person adds their own unique experiences to the city's diverse chapters. In 2024, the creative pulse of Richmond be stronger than ever, propelled by a diverse community of hardworking individuals who infuse the city with their unique talents and visions. From artists pushing the boundaries of traditional mediums to the unsung heroes that ensure the city peace and safety in time of need. One day, that heartbeat stopped, and all of a sudden, the place we called home felt more like jail, or as I like to call it, rich city lockdown. Let's go back. Twenty twenty. virus has now entered a devastating new phase. The U.S. death toll from the virus has surpassed 100 people. 20,000. More than 46,000. 150,000. 200,000. 400,000 people have now died from COVID-19. Amidst one of the most deadliest challenges, there were many innovative pioneers who found ways to shed beacons of creativity and hope through the suffocating clouds of the pandemic. Lacey, a Richmond father who managed to create his own lane during the pandemic, using his culinary gift and innovative spirit to help lead the way. Listening to him sharing his story on how he earned the right to be called a survivor. Hey, how y'all doing? My name is Lacey and this is uh, Lil Majesty. And back here, this is For The Soul Catering, coming out of Richmond, California, native to the city. I had to bring my food back out here for the love. So I started my business um, 2016 and first it was just like a, a idea. One day I just got up believing in myself and uh, never looked back. So pre-COVID, it was kind of like, um, we was happy, bro. You know, families was happy, it was more people together. I think pandemic made a lot of people, you know, sit in the house, uh, <laughs> break up. When I first started, I had to make some money. I had to get some revenue because I didn't get no grants. I didn't get no SBA. I didn't get uh, a PP loan. So I started from nothing. I started with sauce. I started with sauce. I'm, now I'm doing seasoning. Now I'm doing five different sauces. Um, but the thing that really was hard for me to kind of get through was really the pandemic. My Sam brothers at the store at Richmond Food Center, they like, um, they asked me if I wanted to have the space and cook on Sunday because the food truck, the barbecue, the burrito truck wasn't there on Sunday. And I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a try. So that was the biggest day I actually believed in myself and I got off the porch. So after that, I ended up going by Richmond Park on 16th Street, using that empty parking lot. I rocked there for about a year and a half. Then the pandemic hit and the city came out told me that I wasn't, um, this is before I had a trailer, didn't have a trailer, just a barbecue pit, a table, canopy, and a big old heart. And um, they told me I couldn't be out there, I didn't have any PP to protect me from the virus or my customers from the virus. And so I wouldn't be able to do that service there, so that's how that stopped. Um, I suffered for a minute, and I ended up coming up with a new plan, and um, then I got me a trailer. Then remember that story I told you when I didn't have nothing and I started with my seven brothers at 2230 Richmond Food Center? Well, they told me to come back. When I get a food truck, come back, Lacey, we'll take you with open arms. And that's where I am now. So the game just did like a real full 360 for me. I didn't quit. I kept it going from one spot to another spot and um, it got me here. The 
almost four years later, and um, I think COVID didn't do anything but bring the best out of me. So hopefully it bring the best out of you. But as uh, far as our city, we need help because everybody didn't have this this outcome. You know what I mean? Everybody didn't have this outbreak. So if we can get some more black businesses and some funding in our city, I think you'll see a lot more people like me. I survived Rich City Lockdown. Me. Us. The business. Every month, the community of Point Richmond gathers at Park Place Barbers for a one-of-a-kind live musical experience, bearing open ears and good spirits. Sam, the community barber behind the beautiful live experience, shares his survival story and how he managed to stay afloat in the drowning wave of the pandemic. And that's exactly how it started happening. More people start coming in. Then town folks start seeing people come in. I do my music. It's not the hip hop, but it's a soothing music that I know when they heard it, it would cause them to look into the shop. Then COVID hit and shut it all down. Just as we were making a mark. Just as we were making a mark First people of color in a white shop with just making a mark up to maybe four heads a day, maybe six now between the two of us, and COVID hit to shut us down. So the state said, we'll let you cut outside. You got to go online, take a special course, and get this certificate issued to you. That's that COVID haircutting certificate that you see there. You can't cut without that. The only other challenge that was left for me is that I shut down all the foot traffic. How am I going to get them back? How am I going to get them back? That's why we put that sign in the window. We repair homemade haircuts. Because we knew everybody was getting their hair cut at home. So we made a little joke out of it. The folks would laugh at it and say, okay, that's nice. First time they would take pictures of the sign and they'd come in. So we were just being creative to get them inside the shop. Um, when they came in, we were quick to point out, we got a HEPA filter up there on the mezzanine, running all the time. We got a filter back there, see that thing running all the time? Mm -hmm. Plus the air conditioned fan is on all the time. This fan is on all the time. My counter fan behind me is on all the time. And she had a counter fan on. We got a fan in the office, and the door was always open. I've never had COVID, never. Look at where I'm working, in the barbershop. How in the world could you not get COVID? It was nerve wracking, we were fearful that we might get it. But I said, we're doing everything that the states they do. You know, we put all this money into getting these filters and all. I did the smoke test, I'm doing it responsibly. One of the early sessions when we were talking, and I found out who I had. And he would just come out here and hang out. So his daughter came here one time just to hang out in the shop with him. So Noel said, bring my horn. I want to do something. That's him, solo. Me and him sitting over there by that wall. We got 30 folks that are comfortable in a safe environment, you know, after certain restrictions have been lifted. Um, and them getting the word out that we got a comfortable, safe, quaint environment, safe for listening to jazz by some of the jazz greats, it just jumped off from there. I'm Sam Charles, the owner of Park Place Barbers here in Richmond and I survived the rich city lockdown due to COVID. 
For most, the lockdown forced people out of their jobs and into their homes. But when it's your job to ensure the peace and safety of the community, that's not an option. Richmond firefighters Vic, Ron, and Trav share how they fought the flames of COVID while trying not to risk their family's health. My name is Trevor. Uh, this is my eighth year working at Station 64 on B-Shift, truck firefighter. I'm Victor Garcia, a newly promoted engineer. I've been here also eight years. Trevor's my classmate. I'm stationed right here at Station 61 on the A-Shift. name is Ron Davis. Been here 24 years. Captain here at 61C. Uh, I'm a local kid. Uh, this, as I mentioned before, this is my eighth year. And uh, the reason why I chose Richmond, uh, I always wanted to be a firefighter. And there's only a couple of cities that I really wanted to work. Oakland being one, Richmond being one. I took a shot here and they took a shot on me. And uh, I've appreciated this journey ever since. Richmond for me is a uh, very unique city. It's a small, uh, close-knit community. And no matter where you go in this country, you say you're from Richmond, they either know somebody from Richmond or have been in Richmond. And that to me says a lot about uh, the city that we work for. Uh, how working through COVID in the fire department uh, for me, uh, I was, at that time when it first started, my wife was pregnant with our first child and uh, it was it was very tough. It was tough because, like Firefighter Rogers had mentioned, there was a lot of change within the department, in the city, but then now also having a new change uh, personally, it, uh, it really affected me. First, our uh, emergency response to medicals, uh, all our PPE had to change. Um, our response time changed, our Personnel, we had a bit of a, I would say, segregation in between in-house based off the people that wanted to get the COVID shot and people that didn't want to get the COVID shot. So um, we had a lot of growing pains. Obviously, it was the first pandemic I've ever worked through. So uh, we had growing pains on learning how to integrate certain things and assimilate to other things. So that was probably the bumpiest road that we went through during that time. Uh, yeah, for me, post-COVID was, as an officer here, you know, my job is to make sure my people are okay. And the CDC's rules were, you know, up and down, changing constantly from day to day. You know, what do we wear, what do we don't wear, you know, how, do we, how are we going to respond, and that kind of thing. So it was just kind of confusing, and, you know, it was glad to, I was glad to finally get back to where we had a clear understanding on what we were doing and how we were going to do. It ain't over, but for the most part, it's over. This, this is the Richmond, Richmond Fire Department, Department and, and we, we survived, survived the Rich City, city Lockdowns. lockdowns.